Hey, it's Marilla Minnelli, and welcome back to my YouTube channel. Today, I'm gonna show you how to create a bold bunny piece with some dimensional highlights for dark hair using all Kenra color. But before we get started, make sure you hit that subscribe button and turn on all notifications so you don't miss a tutorial. Now let's go ahead and get started. My model's looking to darken her overall hair color, but she really loved that money piece that we gave her last time, so we're gonna go ahead and touch that up. But we're gonna give her a darker effect with the toner formula that you'll see a little bit later. And as far as the back, she wants to break up these highlights and just overall deepen it and create a really rich color. Before I get started, I'm gonna go ahead and section her, and I'm gonna use my traditional method of sectioning out a money piece, which is combing the hair down and pinching the hair to let the hair tell me where it wants to comfortably live. This is just gonna give me the best sectioning according to my client's density and where she naturally parts her hair. She typically wears it down the center, so once I pinched it down, I'm gonna clean it up and then pin that away. I'm gonna do the same thing to the other side and just keep in mind she has that center part, so we're gonna to touch up her money piece right in the center creating a third section. If you want to check out a more in-depth hair tutorial called The Perfect Muddy Piece, you can go ahead and click on the link right above or in the description. This project I'm going to be using Beyond Bond Lightener at a 1 to 2 mixing ratio with 20 volume developer. Now the reason why I decided to go in with this lightener is because she does have some previously lightened hair and I want to make sure that I protect the integrity of her hair, especially since she has pretty light ends. For her second color, I'm going to be using 5MB Plus, which is 5 Mocha Brown in the Monochrome Collection. And this is going to become her base color as well as some low lights. And then I'm also going to be blending in that 5MB into 7MB Plus. And these are both mixed up at a 1 to 1 mixing ratio with 20 volume developer. Now to get to her application started, I'm going to consider her slight widow's peak that she has. So for that center section, I'm actually going to start it off by outlining her widow's peak. So really framing the shape of her natural hairline. And I pull the hair up, I weave those hairs out, and then I'm just going to apply that lightener right onto the new growth area. So if you need a little help with the hair sticking on those ends, I sometimes love using some nourishing mask to help it stick and that way it all fits inside the foil, especially since we're going to be doing a full color application on this particular model. So I'm going to do the same exact thing to the other side, again just outlining that center section and then we're going to get ready to go in horizontally. So my biggest takeaway here is Usually if you want it to be pretty bold, you're going to want that blonde to sit right onto that hairline, which is why I brush the hair up and then weave the highlights towards me, creating a really clean section. Now I'm going to continue on horizontally throughout this section. So the whole point was so that way I could get that outline, bringing that section or highlighted portion back. And the whole point of this is to go ahead and touch up that grow out of that money piece that she has and there is no hair or subsection in between these foils. So everything's gonna be back to back right here in the front. And typically, if somebody wants something pretty bold, I will do about three to four back to back highlights with no hair in between any of my foils. A couple tips when doing a touch up highlight such as this one is to make sure you get your lightener on the areas that need touching up. Try not to do any overlap. You will see here that I did need to pick out one little hair right in the center and it just made it a little difficult to get it colored onto the top portion of that foil. So I decided to just go ahead and pull it all the way through. And I also applied a nourishing mask on the ends. So what this does is A, it gives the hair a little bit of a treatment and it makes the hair stick to the foil. And furthermore, I'm gonna go ahead and trifold this. So what this does is it helps prevent those ends 
from touching the lightener that's towards the top. I'm a huge advocate for trifolding and it just becomes a habit now and a lot of times I trifold even when it's not necessary to trifold. But trifolding comes in really handy when doing touch-ups. So once you get about three to four back-to-back -back foils going on, this is where I'm going to start to incorporate a subsection. So I took a slice and then weaved on top of that slice. So there is that subsection now in between those foils. I'm still touching up the new growth and applying the nourishing mask on the ends. And then I typically end my money piece section with a teasy light. And the reason why I do this is it just creates that nice transition of those back-to-back -back baby lights into a traditional baby light with a subsection. And then now I got a rooted type of highlight going on to finish it off. And it just, again, creates that nice transition that everybody loves because it goes from really bold and then diffuses right into your hair color. So once you get the money piece put in, I'm then gonna work on through the sides and I'm gonna use the same technique, doing back-to-back -back baby lights, pulling the hair all the way up, weaving towards me, and then foiling towards the face. And typically I put in about two back-to-backs right here on that front hairline and then finish off with some traditional baby lights with one subsection in between that foil. So I'm gonna do the same thing to the other side and then once I get my money piece completely put in, I'm then gonna work throughout the back starting with the bottom and then working my way up. For the sectioning in the back, I'm actually gonna go in with a slight U-shaped section. This is just gonna give me a softer end result because I'm creating sections going with the shape of the head. So round head and round sections creates lots of softness and square shapes or hard edges creates lots of contrast. So I'm just gonna get that 5MB plus right onto my new growth, bringing it down a few inches. I'm then gonna use my comb to further blend the color right on down. So this is just gonna help diffuse the line when I get ready to put on the 7MB plus right onto those mids and ends. And then I'm gonna further blend using my hands. I'm gonna continue on throughout the back taking U-shaped sections and they are about an inch to an inch and a half wide. So depending on how much lightness and brightness you're wanting, you're gonna take thinner or thicker subsections. I'm applying that 5MB plus still onto that root area and bringing it down about four inches and making sure to blend. But this is where I'm gonna start incorporating some highlights. So once I get that product combed through slightly, I'm then just gonna weave right on top and using my color board covered with a foil, I'm applying on the mids and then brushing the product right on up and making sure to saturate through the ends. The way that I wrap my foil when working with long hair like this is I just fold that end piece up and then flat wrap another foil right on top. So there's a total of three foils. So unless you're working with a roll of foil, this is kind of the best way to do it. So I'm just gonna do these wide sections on each end, and this is just to brighten up those mids and ends throughout the back. This is just to create a really low maintenance, brightened effect without it looking like highlights. I just want to create that dimension going on in the back. So keep in mind, she didn't have a lot of blonde going on, so I just wanted to add little pops of it here and there that are kind of peekaboo-y throughout the back. So I'm gonna continue on with the same pattern of applying my 5NB right onto the new growth, brushing it down, and then every other section, I'm actually blending that into 7MB+. So all of the hair that's left outside of the foil in the back is gonna be color melted from 5MB into 7MB. I also decided to keep these sections pretty wide. Again, I did not want to create lots of brightness throughout the back, but just little pops of blonde here and there. My overall goal was to create more depth throughout the back and give a very saturated finish using monochrome collection. So once I get a little closer towards the top, I'm gonna change direction because going in with these rounded shapes is gonna get a little difficult. 
So I'm just gonna get on this last row of highlights and then I'm gonna combine that entire top section into one section but working in a mohawk fashion but still in that rounded horseshoe shape that I'm left with. So now I'm going to take these sections horizontally and I'm gonna apply that 5MB blending that right into 7MB but this time I'm gonna start incorporating lowlights and highlights in order to break up this bright and blonde going on. So here I'm using 5MB plus and bringing it all the way down through the ends. And then for these subsections, I'm still taking that 5MB plus, applying it onto new growth, blending that right into 7MB plus for the mids. But what I'm doing a little differently here is I'm gonna tip out the ends with some lightener. So this is gonna be like a full on color melt using three different formulas. And this is just to keep it a little bit brighter just because we wanna create a little bit of dimension for those ends. Tipping out the ends of her hair with lightener is gonna give me a little bit of a lighter palette to work with when we get ready to do her final toner. So everything that's left out of the foil is going to have 5MB, blended into 7MB and then tipped out with the lightener. But everything inside of the foil is gonna be my true low light using 5MB plus from roots to ends. So I'm just gonna continue on with this same pattern until I get to the very, very top, making sure that the last section that I do is the 5MB blended into the 7MB and then I'm gonna split it right in half and then tip it out with the lightener right onto the ends. Once I'm completely done with her application, I'm gonna process her for 30 minutes and then shampoo and get ready for her final toner. For her final formula, I'm gonna be using two different colors. So I decided to go in with 7RB in Demi at a one to two mixing ratio with nine volume developer. And then for my secondary formula for the very tips and ends, I'm using 8ROM at a one to two mixing ratio with nine volume developer. I'm gonna be applying her toner formula onto damp hair and I'm isolating out her money piece and I'm working on through the back first. So for the entire back section where I added in those little pops of lightened pieces, I'm just applying the 7RB from those mids to ends. And then for her money piece, I'm gonna take that same 7RB formula right onto her base and then just bring it down just a few inches making sure to bring it down just a little bit because then I'm gonna add the 8ROM that I mixed up and make a third color by blending it right into, so essentially creating that color melt. So I'm not really looking for a huge transition in levels here. This is just to create a transition in tone. So 7RB gives a really rich tone to the hair, but the 8ROM is just gonna blush it out just a little bit, which I absolutely love, especially against this mocha brown. Once I'm done with my application, I'm gonna process her for 20 minutes for maximum saturation. And here's a final result of my bold money piece with some dimensional highlights and lowlights for dark hair using all Kenra color. And just to give you a little recap, her overall formula, we went in with Beyond Bond Lightener at a one to two mixing ratio with 20 volume developer, and then used a combination of the brand new Mocha Brown series 5MB and 7MB, both at a one to one mixing ratio with 20 volume developer. And then for her final toner, I went in with 7RB and blended that right into 8ROM at a one to two mixing ratio with nine volume developer. So I really hope you enjoyed this hair tutorial and if you did, please give this video a thumbs up and make sure to subscribe and comment down below what your favorite part of this entire tutorial was or maybe an aha moment and I'll be sure to respond. You can also find me on my other social channels like Facebook, Instagram, and TikTok, all under Morella Minnelli. And you can even find more free educational resources on my website at morellaminnelli.com. And if you're interested in becoming a hair model for one of these videos, there's also a model application form right there on my website. So be sure to fill that out and be put onto the email list when I need a model. So thanks so much for watching and I'll see you next time.